Good morning, everybody. I say good morning, everybody. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, you can do better than that. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm looking for the folk in the house that are excited, that are ready to give God a... Come on now, y'all real cute and proper today. I know we're going to lift up the graduates, but can you lift up the King of Kings? Come on. Can you lift up the, the Lord of Lords? Come on. Can you lift up the one that woke you up this morning? Come on, the one that started you on your way. Come on, put breath in your body. I need a few of y'all just wave back at you, boy. If you know God's been good to you, and he brought you from a mighty long way, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so excited this morning that we have this opportunity to be a church that can thank God for the graduates that have come and matriculated through whatever discipline and course of study that they've gone through at this particular moment. I do want to do this. Uh, if we can cue some music, Brother DeMarcus, give me some of what they call pomp and circumstance. If we can rise to our feet and let's give God praise for the graduates as they come through. Come on. Amen. As they're coming through. Come on, put your hands together for them. Amen. And taking seats. We want to yield. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We want to yield our sister Tamika Parker as she shares some information with us. Circle of Eight is the new beginning. All right, all right. Yeah. So as we call each graduate up this morning, don't just celebrate yours, celebrate them all. Yes. This is a major accomplishment for so many, and I promise you, as you all walked in here today, you struck a nerve with somebody, it's gonna change somebody, and they gonna wanna do the same. Amen. Even when they felt like they have given up. So when it all seems too hard and you're crippled by fear, the best course to advance is make sure that you all persevere. Amen. Wherever you go and whatever you do in life, take that one word with you, and it's called persevere. Pastor, as we introduce each of you that will come up and take a picture, I ask that you all stand. Graduates. <laughs> Miss Natalia Collins. She's the daughter of Teron and Lakeisha Collins. She'll be graduating from Park Crossing High School. She's a cheer captain. Advanced diploma. She'll be t attending on the Hill, Alabama A&M University, where she'll be majoring in biology. Her favorite scripture is Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Y'all show us some love. Amen. Kendall Tyrell Dixon. He's the son of Herman and Kenya Dixon. He'll be graduating from Pike Road High School. He'll be attending Troy University. He'll be majoring in kinesiology and exercise science with goals to become a physical therapist. His favorite quote is, always believe in yourself. Our next up is Caitlin Page Peterson. 
She's the daughter of Tito and Michelle Peterson. She's be graduating from Brubaker Technology Magnet High School. She's a Roll Kappa Honor Society, National Honor Society, National Society of High School so Scholars, National Technical Honor Society. She's a recipient of over $450,000 in scholarships. Caitlin is also a member of this history-making Brutech softball team that's headed to state next week. She'll be attending Tennessee State University, majoring in computer science with cybersecurity concentration. Her favorite scripture, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all our ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Our next up is Kaja Faith Washington. She's the daughter of Katrina Washington, Selvin Harris, graduating from Sydney Lanier High School. She's a member of the National Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta, Beta Club, Principal Leadership Award. She's a Sigma Gamma Rho Miss Romania recipient. She just received the English Arts Literature Award, National and Music Award, as well as the HOSA Award. She'll be attending Transitions Technical College, majoring in cosmetology, Barbara and MUA program. Her favorite scripture as well is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Our next up in his absence, I will be accepting. My husband, Jamie M. Parker Sr. He's the son of Eva and James Parker, yours truly husband. Graduated from Amherst University, Montgomery, Alabama, summa cum laude. Associate of Arts in Information Systems Management, where he currently serves as a 25 Bravo and a 25 uniform in the Alabama Army National Guard. His scripture, Psalms 91 and 1, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Our next up, Angel Janae Jelks. She's the daughter of Sister Deborah Gamble. She's a graduate of University of Alabama in Birmingham. She graduated cum laude. She's a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, currently working in the neonatal intensive care unit at Baptist East. Her scripture is Proverbs 16 and 3, one of my favorites. Put God in front of you and guess what? He'll do the rest for you. Our next up is Kaya Mache Washington. She's the daughter of Quinn and Kimberly Pruitt, Keltrick D. Washington Sr. She graduated from Alabama A&M. She has a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, a minor with Computer Science. She has accepted a position with Northrop Grumman as an Associate Engineer. Her favorite scripture, is Mark 10 and 27, Jesus. Look at them and said, with man it is impossible. But with God, for all things are possible. And our last but not least, she's our only master's recipient, Tamiko Rashonda Jenkins. She's a graduate. She's a graduate of University of Phoenix with a Master of Science degree in Administrative of Justice and Security on the Dean's List. She's currently a Crime Victims Compensation Specialist with Alabama Crime Victims Compensation Commission. With her degree, she'll be able to become an adjunct instructor teaching undergrads how the justice system works. Her favorite scripture is another. Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the plans that I have for you. Declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. I present to you our 2022 Circle of Eight, New Home, Mount May, graduating class.
Amen. Praise the Lord. New home. Come on, lift your hands. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is a good God. Come on, God is a good God. Hallelujah. Amen. We are so honored and privileged to have our guest psalmist here today, uh, Miss Psalmist Tonya Baker. Amen. Can you give her a hand? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just a little bio about her. Uh, she is a very sought out psalmist, amen, across the country. She has her own independent production company in which she has released a few albums uh, entitled Life in Him, Since He Came In, The Live Encounter, which was produced by a Grammy Award uh, winner, Myron Butler. Yeah. Amen. She is an author of the book Worship Beyond the Song. She is also a songwriter. She has written for artists such as Tone, Kim Burrell, Sherry Jones Moffitt, and Helen Baylor. Amen. She's been featured on certain projects as far as uh, Grammy Award winning Jonathan McReynolds, Phil Tarver, Joe yeah, Pace, yeah. Full Gospel Mass Choir, and Oscar Williams. She currently serves as the praise and worship leader, the volunteer worship leader as, at T.D. Jake's Church, the Potter's House. Amen. 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 And most of all, she's saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Psalmist Tanya Baker. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, that's always a cringy moment, right? That's always a cringy moment to stand and have people talk about you. But listen, we came to talk about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning. Yes. 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 Y'all didn't come here to look at anybody. Y'all came to give God the glory and the praise. So if you don't mind doing it, why don't you get up on your feet right now and give God a great hallelujah. And can we just take a moment to celebrate all this academic excellence? Yeah. Can we celebrate God for the gifts that he's placed inside of his people? Hallelujah. He's given us intellect. Come on, we're an intelligent people. Yes. We don't serve God in ignorance. We serve him with intellect. Hallelujah. Yes. We know in whom we believe. We know in whom we believe. Hallelujah. And he's given us the gifts and the talents. Come on, somebody give God a praise in here. Yeah, he's worthy. He's worthy. I know you have your mask on, but just underneath your mask, why don't you give God a shout? Oh, yeah, take a little bit of the bottoms out for me. Oh, yes, God. Come on, is anybody ready for God to arise and come to your defense? Come on, let's sing. Arise, oh God, and take your place. Hallelujah. Let your kingdom be established. Yeah. You are the ancient of days. You are. You are good. And your mercy. Come on, clap.
righteous and the one who sanctifies, the one that justifies, and the one who is. You are good, so good, hallelujah. I wonder if anybody in here agrees this morning. Shout it. You are Give it. 
God. Worthy God. Now y'all to have a praise in the house. Come on, if you know he's been good to you, come on, lift up your hands and tell God, thank you. Yeah. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do, but he's been good to me. Tell him, say, you can watch me, but I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. You can stare at me, but I'm about to lose my mind. He been good to me. You tell somebody he been good. He been good. He been good. My God today. My God today. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. He's been good. So good. Take your seat if you can. Take your seat. If you can, take your seat if you can. He been better to, to me than I could be to myself. I say he been better to me than I could be to myself. Now every now and then you ought to take a second just look over your life. And when you begin to think about it, you ought to go cuckoo for Cocoa Puff and begin to give God a thank you shout. I got at least five people in the room. I think you got something to give God praise for. And now is your month. Don't wait till tomorrow. Come on. Don't wait till next Sunday. Come on. Lose your mind right now. God been good to somebody. And I think that's why you putting your hands together. Come on. Now, some of them missed it. They'll get it later on. I said they missed it. They'll get it later on. But God will do more than you ever expected. I said tell somebody God will do more than you ever expected. Come on, let's give God praise. Just one praise. Come on. Y'all Presbyterian this morning. It's okay. Hallelujah. God is still in the room and he's in the blessing business. A few announcements. I want to give this to you real quick for those of you, uh, those of you who can heed these announcements. It's my prayer uh, that you're turning in your, your t-shirt order forms and new home paraphernalia order forms this Sunday. They are due today. Uh, somebody shout today. They're due today. I want you to also uh, be mindful. Next Sunday, we're putting emphasis on our youth. Uh, it's youth day. Uh, and our very own brother Lamar Butler will be bringing the word. Can we encourage him? <laughs> Amen. He's been leading the young saints for quite some time. And I believe he has something to share with us as well. Amen. Uh, today at 4 p.m., we want to see you um, at Lanier High School. Uh, as we begin to celebrate and support our young children, they'll be dancing at the halftime show uh, of the Central Alabama Jaguars basketball game. Uh, it's Faith and Family Sunday. Uh, so, New Home, I'm asking at least 30 of you to make your way there. It's going to cost $5 for entry, but I believe that if we want our children to stay on the path they're on, that we've got to support them when they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Amen. All right, that was a pity, Pat, but all the parents ought to make some noise. All right. Y'all real Presbyterian today. Look at somebody say, we Baptists. We, we Baptists. Oh, amen. Praise the Lord. Um, please save the date. Uh, Vacation Bible School will begin June the 21st uh, through the 23rd. That's next month. The theme is Rocking Rampage. Uh, so bring your kids, Lottie Dottie, and everybody. Amen. Uh, the women's ministry is going to have a meeting today uh, in the fellowship hall. 
Uh, all the women of the church who are part of the women's ministry, uh, there'll be a meeting today in the fellowship hall immediately after service. Uh, we also want to keep in front of you because y'all like to look real nice on Pentecost Sunday. It's the first Sunday of June. I need you in all white. Somebody shout all white. First Sunday in June, Pentecostal Sunday, uh, we're wearing all white. And we want you to continue to pray for all of our sick and shut-in, uh, those of the likes of Minister Thomas Jenkins, Sister Louise Robinson, Sister Monica Richardson. Uh, pray for our seniors and continue to lift up the family of Brother DeAndre Pritchett in the loss of his nephew. It's him and or them today, but it can be you tomorrow. And I believe that prayer has power. Amen. Uh, so we are going to be a praying church. I want to pause for the moment. We do know that we have this great psalmist here with us who's leading worship today. Uh, she was a blessing on yesterday uh, as we had the opportunity to partner with uh, the Wellness Coalition and the Loving Teddy Bear Foundation uh, for their mental health symposium. A few of them are here today, uh, and I will acknowledge them. Sister Sonia McCall, Sister Tara, we thank God for them. Can we give God praise for them? And I forget my brother's name, but he shows shot with his arms on. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for them and the opportunity uh, to host that symposium. And that's where uh, this psalmist of today, and Sister uh, Baker, she sung on yesterday so eloquently. Um, and it's a blessing to see people who are able uh, to do it both ways. She was real professional yesterday, but she church it today. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Y'all know I love some churchy stuff. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, so I do want to thank God for their presence. But there are some first-time, second-time visitors in the house. And I want to acknowledge you. Now, this is a Baptist church, but we don't want you to get up and tell us where you're from and all that good stuff. If you can wave your hand at your brother, we want to give you a good old new home welcome. First-time, second-time visitors. Come on. There they are in the back of the house. Come on, new home. Let's make some noise. Oh, amen. Praise God. We're grateful. We're grateful for your presence. Your presence, I pray, will give me some power. Uh, but I do believe that something will be said, something will be sung that will encourage you to keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. Our desire is to embrace you, empower you, and employ you to do the works of God. So I pray that something uh, blesses you, that you'll continue on throughout the course of next week, giving God all of the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. Church family, one more time. Pastors out the way. Can we give God praise for the music ministry? As as they come before us one more time. Bless the name of the Lord. I do get a little churchy from time to time. <laughs> but it's only because the Lord's been good to me. Yeah. He really has. <laughs> It's beyond anything that I could have imagined because honestly, I wouldn't have chosen me. I know me. <laughs> but he has a way of looking beyond our current, looking beyond our past and pouring himself into us by way of his precious Holy Spirit, cleaning us up on the inside, changing our hearts and our minds, changing our perspective, changing how we approach life, right? And beyond anything I deserve, he loved me. That's this life. Yeah. Oh, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't 
can't praise you enough, yeah. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I tried, cause you've been so good to me. I know you know it. Come on, lift your voice and sing it with a sing. You've been my God, you are. You've been better than I can. I owe you my life. I can't breathe, even if I try. How you can't be gone. I can't praise you in a fifth eye. Oh, so good to me, yes. Come on, I know that's your testimony. If you agree, come on, stand up and sing with us. So Still wouldn't be enough to give you the glory you deserve to me, God. Come on, just one last time. Let's sing it. Oh, 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 you are so good. My God, you are better than good. I can't praise you. So many ways you made, so many times you healed. Yeah, anybody agree today? So many doors you opened, so many ways you made, so many times you healed me. Oh, yeah, yeah, so many doors. I believe if we took a moment to ask everybody in here, you'd be to say so many doors, so many ways, so many times you heal me. Thank you, Jesus. So many, so many ways, so many times you heal me. Over and over and over and over and over again. So Better than good to me. 
You've done for me how you lose my shackles in you set me free how you made a way when there was no way turn my darkness turn your darkness in the day you be y'all grab your bibles so good I didn't deserve it, but God, you've been so good. You've been so good. My, 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 you've been so good. Brought me out of darkness into your marvelous light. Pulled me out of dangers. Pushed me out of the devil's way. How you made a way, how you made a way, you made a way, you made a way. Folks said I wouldn't be it, folks said I couldn't do it, 
folks said I wasn't amounting to anything. But God, you stepped in. You flipped the script. You turned me around. Hey, played my feet on solid ground. Oh, you've been so good. You've been so good. I want to thank you right now, God, because you've been good to me. Made a way out of no way. Made a way out of no way. If the devil had it his way, I wouldn't be here today. But is there anybody who can shout out, thank God? I got a testimony. I'm still here. I'm still strong. Still got my mind. Still clothed. I thank God. Tragedies are commonplace. People are slipping away. The economy down. But all I can say, say thank you, Lord, for what you've done for Lee. Y'all don't mind me. Thank you, Lord, for what you did for me. Say there's muggers and robbers, folk killing black folk every other day. But as for me, all I can say, he's been my protector. He's been my sustainer. He's been my protector. Yeah. He's been so good. Grab your Bibles. The Lord has been, been so good. Psalm, Psalm 13. Psalm 13. When you get it, rise to your feet. Psalm 13. Hallelujah. I can never repay you, Lord. 10,000 tongues aren't enough. Oh. Mm -hmm. Psalm 13. It's on the screen for those of you who can't see it. I want to read. My God, I want to read. Uh, wow. All right. I want to read verse number one and verse number two. We're looking at the English Standard Version. It says, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long, somebody shout how long, shall my enemy be exalted over me? We'll keep reading. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Verse number four says, lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him, lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But verse number five says, but I have trusted in your steadfast love and my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Verse number six says it like this, I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Look at your neighbor real quick, say neighbor, the preacher's gonna preach about the weight of weight, the weight of weight. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father God, we thank you for this moment that is ours. It's our prayer that you give us preaching power for we understand that if you don't preach through me, there shall be no preaching. If you don't teach through me, there shall be no teaching. My prayer is simply less of Lee and more of thee. In the mighty name of Jesus, we all shout amen. The weight of weight. Give me a little bit of something. Something missing. The weight of weight. I, over the course of the last two Sundays, I've been talking to you, and you didn't even know we were in a series. But we've been dealing with how to handle divine delays. The reality that sometimes God is not like Mark always suggested, a God who will move immediately. But sometimes God will make you wait. 
And as we talked about this weight, I believe it's necessary for you to understand that the weight that God allows us to have, for those of you who are teens and in young saints, you can leave at this moment. Anybody for young saints? The weight that God allows us to have to take and or deal with, it often causes us to be bewildered. It often causes us to feel as though all hope is gone. And I really want to talk to you about this today for all the real folk in the room. I want to talk to you about this because I told you that delay is always for your development. But I got to tell you something else as, as I desire and endeavor to be real. Delay might always be for your development, but delay is also difficult. I've been hearing you on the back row. Every time I preach, you said to yourself, well, Rev, you don't know what my situation is. And the longer God takes to get me what I prayed for and what he's promised to me, it is being and adding more difficulty to my life. Now, what I want to tell you today is we have this opportunity to look at somebody who knows everything about waiting. And I think there's somebody in the room who would suggest if I could talk to you by yourself, even in this moment, that God promised me some things and it seems as if it still has not manifested. Preacher, I hear you saying better days are coming. I hear you saying the best is yet to come, but God told me that a blessing was coming my way, but I'm still feeling burdened. God told me that he was going to make my worry, my marriage work out, but it still seems to be going the wrong direction. God told me that my children would be begin to behave, but it seems as if every day that goes on they get worse and worse -er and worse -er -er. y'all come on help me up in this church I'm looking for the real folk that can just be real with me and testify God told me I'd be the head and not the tail but it seems as if every day I wake up I'm on the tail end of every I need the real folk in the church this morning to just be real about the fact that you're waiting on God to do something in your life he said he'll fix it he said he shift it. He said he'll move it. He said he'll elevate it. But you just have to wait. And I think you need to nudge your neighbor and tell your neighbor, just wait, just wait, just wait. Because although weight is for your development, although weight is difficult, the reality is our sermonic spotlight is on a psalm that was written by a brother named David. If there's anybody who knows something about waiting, it is that brother by the name of David. David, ladies and gentlemen, had to wait to be presented. He had to wait to be picked. He had to wait to be promoted. He had to wait to be praised. David was left out of the ceremonial opportunity to be anointed, but we praise God that even though you got to wait sometimes to get what God has for you, God told the prophet, he told him, y'all can't move until he comes. And although you're waiting, child of God, although you see your enemies it seems like they're being promoted, although it seems as if your family and your friends are getting what you thought God had for you, if it's for you, it's still for you. Sometimes you're waiting on God and God is waiting on you. And so... The question is, David, you had to wait through all of this. What is it that you're teaching us? Because in this moment, you've waited so long, you're beginning to lose hope. If your Bible's still open and your apps unlock, uh, David is saying, how long must I continue to wait? Yeah, he says, how long, oh Lord, will you forget me forever? I love it, child of God, because when you're waiting, it does get difficult. Point number one for the note takers, you are in a dangerous place when you're hurting because you're waiting. Because hurt people hurt people. And the reality is you ought not allow your weight to mess with your feelings when you can tap into your feelings. All right. You ought not allow weight to mess with your F-E-E-L-I-N-G-S. That's a moment for you to tap into your F-I-L-L-I-N-G-S. God put something on the inside of you that can endure the weight. Get out of your feelings and wait on God. But David's in his feelings. And David, point number one, he's waiting on the Savior. It's difficult chairman because he's waiting on the savior but he feels as if God is not remembering him 
If there's anybody who should remember you, it should be the person who took care of you. It should be the person who allowed you to be who you are. It should be the person that you love, you'd expect them to love you back. I'm talking to somebody and you don't even hear it. I understand what it's like when you're having to deal with the reality that folk that are supposed to love on you aren't loving on you. It seems uh, as if they don't remember you. It seems as if although you've done all you can to take care of them or them take care of you, that all of a sudden your relationship is in shambles. David feels like I'm praying to God and God is hitting the decline. I need the real folk in the room. We're going to deal with some tension this morning. I'm going to get somebody freed because the reality is that everything you pray for, you have not seen manifest. Some of y'all been praying for 30 years and it still has not come through for you yet. But God says in those moments, you still got to get out of your feelings. Now, now it's a little more difficult than that because he doesn't only feel as if God is not remembering him. But he feels like God is not revealing anything to him. Look at it. Verse number one. Will you forget me forever? And how long will you hide your face from me? What does it feel like, child of God, 